Holy shit. <laughs> Disclaimer. Uh, I, I am completely overwhelmed um, that so many of you are here, and thank you. Um, thank you not just because you're here, but also thank you because we just found out that the book is on the uh, because the crowd speak directly in the microphone. <laughs> 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 I'll just hang over it. <laughs> so, very angry here. Um, but also, thank you, because I just found out that um, the book is for the, for a full month, has been on the New York Times bestseller list. And, um, <laughs> surprise to everyone, including myself, um, and what's so awesome about that is I just keep going back to the fact that the reason why the book is so popular is because of us. It's because of all of the misfits out there who are like, we're together. We're together. And I think it's so amazing to have this like group of fantastic misfits. As a matter of fact, somebody on my uh, on the blog said something like the uh, the misfit mating call should be like something like get the fuck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. But still, there are some things that bring us all together. Um, so I, I wanted to start with a with a very quick disclaimer that I should have said before I curse a lot. I. Apologize in advance for offending you because you are going to listen and giggle at non sequiturs about Hitler and abortion and poverty, and you will feel superior to all the uptight, easily offended people who need to learn how to take a fucking joke. <laughs> Somewhere in here, you'll hear one random thing that you're sensitive about, and everyone else will think it's hysterical, but you will think, oh, that is way over the line. <laughs> I apologize for that one thing. Honestly, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> chapter that I'm going to read today is one of my favorites because I get to scream such inappropriate things. <laughs> it's so much fun and I always feel like even if it like just completely bombs, I'm still going to be able to say, guess what I said to a crowd of people. <laughs> so uh, so if, if you've read the book already, you'll, you'll know exactly why. This chapter is called The Psychopath on the Other Side of the Bathroom Door. <laughs> My friend Lada told her doctor, told me that her doctor told her that her antidepressants weren't working because she had too many toxins in her body and that she needed to use a colon cleanse to flush everything out of her system. It sounded completely insane and I told her that, but then she mentioned that when she took the colon cleanse, she lost three pounds that very day and I was immediately in. <laughs> I convinced myself that I owed it to my family to have my crazy pills work properly, but really I just wanted to lose three pounds without working out. And that whole last sentence kind of proves why I need to be on crazy pills. <laughs> so I went to the grocery store, but I couldn't find a colon cleanse. I considered asking the pharmacist, but as I was waiting in line, I had a conversation in my head that went a little something like this. Um, yes, I like some colon cleanse. <laughs> I've never heard of that, said the pharmacist in my head. Sounds like something deviants use. <laughs> no, no. Um, it's something that cleans out your colon so that your antidepressants work better. <laughs> I think you're using your antidepressants wrong. <laughs> They go in your mouth. <laughs> you are surprisingly unhelpful for a health care worker. <laughs> I'm calling the police, you deviant. <laughs> and I'm not sure why I jumped right to the pharmacist calling the police, but once the thought was in my head, it was stuck there. And so I panicked a little when the pharmacist asked what I actually needed. I paused awkwardly and then asked where the reading glasses were, and then he said that they didn't carry reading glasses, which was weird because most pharmacies do, and I always like to try them on and pretend that I'm a naughty librarian. <laughs> so instead of the colon cleanse, I decided that I would just take a bunch of x because I figured it's the next best thing, right? <laughs> 
about the extra straight stuff because it was the same price as the regular straight. <laughs> and so technically it was like I was saving money. <laughs> I don't know how to help my argument later when my husband Victor demanded to know why I had bought twenty dollars worth of unnecessary laxatives. <laughs> Although later it turned out he didn't really care about the cost of that <laughs> being economically feasible or just wants me to be fat or something. <laughs> I already knew that he was being judgy about the whole thing because he was also very unsupportive when I wanted to buy those Chinese foot pad things that suck all of the toxins out of your feet while you sleep. <laughs> he claims the whole Chinese foot pad thing is a scam, but I think it's just because he wants me to suffer or possibly that he's racist. <laughs> And then when I called him racist, she got all mad and screaming, and I was all, I don't even know what I'm saying, those are the toxins talking. <laughs> he still wouldn't let me buy them. And this is exactly why I waited until the week that he left for a business trip to New York to actually do the cleanse. I took two chocolate squares of X-Lax that night, but then I noticed that the direction said that it would bring gentle results, and it seemed like a good colon cleansing shouldn't be gentle at all. <laughs> I took three more tabs. <laughs> and they were chocolatey and delicious, and I was kind of hungry, so I ate another one. <laughs> and then, nothing happened at all. So the next morning, I took two more. Because <laughs> at this point, I thought maybe there was something wrong with me, and I had some sort of freakishly high laxative tolerance. <laughs> and then I went to Starbucks, and I picked up a giant frappuccino. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> no one told me the coffee was a laxative. <laughs> I know now. <laughs> so I drove back to my home drinking my frappuccino and then my intestines exploded. <laughs> I mean, they didn't literally explode, but it totally felt that way. At first I was all, okay, pain is good. Feel the burn. But then I realized that this was not like yoga and that I had made a horrible, horrible mistake. I'm not going to get graphic, but it basically felt like my legs had melted and an elephant had crawled inside my stomach and was clawing its way out. <laughs> An elephant had claws, apparently. His nose was made of snakes. Since Victor was in New York and Haley was at school, my daughter, I had the house to myself, which was good because honestly there would have been no way to maintain the social mystery of womanhood had <laughs> anyone heard the noises coming from my bathroom. <laughs> At a certain point I started worrying that I might be ODing. <laughs> I wasn't sure what ODing on laxatives actually looked like, but I was fairly certain that it would be messy and that you probably should ask your entire colon. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is actually medically possible, and I considered calling Lada to ask her if she felt like she was shitting out her phone when she did her cleanse, but I wasn't sure that I could talk without screaming, and also I didn't have her phone number. <laughs> and so I sat there thinking that this would be a horrible way to die, because basically no matter what I had accomplished in my life, it would always be overshadowed by it. And then she died on the toilet from pooping out her own lover and husband. <laughs> Like if it had happened to Thomas Edison, that would probably be the first thing in his Wikipedia entry. <laughs> It'd be all Thomas Edison, who pooped out his own colon, made a variety of inventions that changed the way we live today. <laughs> did we mention he pooped out his own colon? <laughs> because he totally did. Thomas Edison pooped out his own colon. Honestly, we can't stress this enough. <laughs> time that I decided I needed to take action, so I found some pepto bismol and took a cool dose. I considered checking more, but at this point, I was concerned I might have to call 911 for help, and I didn't want to have to explain why I had taken three times the recommended amount of laxatives and three times the recommended amount of antibiotic medicine, because even to me, that sounded like some sort of poorly planned suicide attempt. <laughs> The anti-diarrheal seems somewhat rational comparatively. <laughs> Surely I thought this will make you seem more credible and much less likely to be put on suicide watch. <laughs> of course, the Pepto-Bismol was no match for the raw power of the x was much like bringing shin guards in the middle of a tornado. <laughs> Except even less effective, because at least with shin guards, when they found your body later, you could still wear a skirt in your coffin. <laughs> Unless your legs got ripped off entirely, which could totally happen. <laughs> but the Pepto-Bismol didn't do anything except turn my tongue black. 
Interesting side note, apparently only like one in six people when you take Pepto-Dismal and turns your tongue black and everyone else it doesn't. I didn't realize this at the time. I thought it happened to everyone. So like five, six of the people that read this book are like, what the fuck is she talking about? And the other one six like, yeah! And the only reason that I know this is because Pepto-Dismal contacted me. Cat. 
So instead, I wrote this on toilet paper, with lipstick, but just the key words and not the whole thing, because that would be ridiculous. <laughs> God for saving me from being assaulted and also for not making me have to explain to the ambulance drivers that I had accidentally mistaken my cat for a rapist after purposely overdosing on laxatives in order to make my antidepressants work better. <laughs> Mainly because that's the kind of story that gets told over and over again to the new ambulance crew. <laughs> Remember that girl from high school who had to have the boot buckle removed? And so maybe in comparison, my story wasn't really so weird after all. <laughs> Except for Victor came home, I told him about it because how could you not share that story? <laughs> and he got all testy about the laxatives and implied that I, quote, couldn't be trusted in the house unsupervised. <laughs> and I'm all, glass half full, asshole, I didn't get raped, right? <laughs> Um, you know what, I would accept that there's so many you can go anywhere and get them for free. 
And so, and that's so much better is when you're like, you're, you're eating food out of your frisbee because you don't have any dishes left in your house that are clean. And then you turn it over and it says something like, I'm in cancer since 1972. And you're like, hell yeah, I am. or a blogger, I would be doing drugs. <laughs> I, writing is such therapy to me, and when I have something that happens to me that's maybe really bad or really traumatic or I'm having a hard time or something, I write it, and when I shut the page, it feels like it's kind of caught in between um, pages. And so I can go on and feel a little less depressed or anxious or whatever it is that I'm feeling. Um, and so, honestly, I really think I would be doing a lot of drugs. I mean, I think, they, Friday saved me! <laughs> That's a terrible answer, but it's the right answer, sorry. What's, what's it been like meeting kind of like all of the nerd icons except for Nathan Dillier? Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, meeting all the nerd icons is amazing and wonderful. Um, not in the least because they are exactly how you want them to be. They're totally normal, completely sweet, and so amazingly down to earth. And there's something so wonderful about that. Um, I, the, the favorite part, my favorite person that I've ever met was um, Bill Gaiman, wrote Sandman, and like a ton of other stuff, but Sandman just like changed my life. Sandman was for me like the, the pinnacle of, oh my god, writing changed lives. Um, and he has given me such great advice, um, and one piece of advice that he gave to me that I always share, and it's interesting because he just did a commencement and talked about it in his commencement, so it's interesting that we both talked about it, but um, when I was working on the audiobook, I was had really bad anxiety disorder, and I was terrified, and the people that were doing, the, the producers, when I was speaking, they would say, we can hear it in your voice, you can, you can hear how, you, how scared you are, you really need to work on this, let's, you know, well, why don't you take a break and then come back, and so I DM'd them and said, well, what do I do? Like, I know you've done this before, tell me something, just tell me something that will make this okay, because they're gonna kick me out, and I'm gonna fail at this, and I just feel like a total loser. And he said, pretend you're good at it. And there was something so perfect about that, and that is exactly what I did. Was I walked in and I was like, I can do this. I'm someone else, and I and I did it. Um, at any time when I'm terrified of something, that's what I. As a matter of fact, it's written on my arm because <laughs> I had to write it on the way. I was like, okay, don't throw up and pretend you're good at it. <laughs> um, Nathan Fillion has, has not returned my calls. <laughs> You never 
want to like walk in on your child who's hugging a cobra. <laughs> I actually know you failed. So. Okay, this will sound creepy till I tell you I run a perfume blog, but what perfume do you want? <laughs> I don't wear perfume. I suck. I'm sorry. <laughs>
people are under the assumption that this is a blocked book. What it really was is I wrote the book first, or I wrote a couple of chapters, and I didn't know anything about blogging. I was just writing this story because I wanted to have it for my daughter. Um, but what happened was um, as I was <coughs> writing, I realized that I was not very good at it, and I didn't have a voice. And I was reading this blog on the Eastern Chronicle, and this mother who was writing it said, I don't think that you can be a good parent and a good blogger um, at the same time, so I quit. And I emailed the editor and said, apparently I'm a terrible mother, because I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, which is how I got my first job, although I don't think you can call it a job if you do it for free, but I'm going to say you, I'm going to say it was a job. And uh, so I started doing that, and then I kept getting in trouble for saying inappropriate things, I bet, shocking. And uh, so I started the blog S, just as a place that I could first for my three friends. And um, it grew and grew, and I found my voice. And at a certain point, I horribly embarrassed myself in a public place, and my agent was there and was like, what the fuck just happened? And um, that's how I kind of got discovered. And she said, I bet you have a book in you. And I was like, no, I don't know. I have a book, but it's not for publishing. And she read it. She was like, no, this, it needs to be published. Someone will, someone will read it. We'll find at least five or six people who need to read it. <laughs> And so I thought, okay, I'll do it because it'll be funny to write about on the blog when it fails so miserably. And, um, and <laughs> so I guess I guess I would say write and write for yourself because if you write for yourself, you're never sad with what you get paid with, and because what you get paid with is your stories, and and those are going to be with you forever, with your family forever. Anybody else before we do the signing? Oh, yes. Do you know who runs the Copernicus Facebook page? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no, no one will tell me. I have no idea. I, 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 I thought it was somebody, and I emailed him, and he said, no, it's not me. So I don't know who it is. As a matter of fact, I don't even follow him because it's a little dark. He didn't follow him. <laughs> um, not going to have anything against it. If, if, you, if you do something funny, do it, and you, you don't need my permission. But um, no, I I did not think of Brian Casey. My the Beyonce was. I, I do own the Beyonce Facebook page, but that's it. Oh, um, well, I guess I'm outing myself as the world's most inappropriate person. My seven-year-old daughter wants to know if she will have the Brian Casey. I do. Not only do I have the Brian Casey, but he is in my purse, oh, right there. And when I do my signing, I'll, I'll put him out on the table so that if you know, if you want to go by and get a picture with the Brian Casey. Yeah, for the 30 minute touch. The survey is here when you're online.